Hello everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. Today we are having a go at a little bit of uh, decorative carving. Um, we've got a bowl, we've got like a little panel, and then a project I did a few weeks ago, like a um, croaking frog. Um, so we're going to um, we're going to scorch those using um, like a, a, a burner, a, um, a blowtorch, I should say, and um, also you could use uh, black ebonizing spray. Um, and we're we're going to show you that as well. Um, you could use any type of spray paint uh, to to kind of cover the surface, and then we're going to carve beneath the surface to reveal the kind of naked wood and um, give us that contrast. Let's go outside and um, prep our bits of wood. Okay, so we've got our bowl here. It's unfinished. I've actually taken this out of our wood scrap bin. Um, one of the guys done a bit of turning. Um, so it's not been sanded or finished, but it's not really going to matter too much for what we're doing today. Um, we've got our blow torch. This is a map gas on there, but you could use the butane. Um, it's just going to take a little bit longer to scorch. And I'm wearing safety goggles. It's not likely for anything to happen, but if anything kind of spits or if you've got any little silicates or anything in there, always wise to wear a pair of goggles. Now this flame burns really hot and we're going to travel right the way past the bowl so that we don't stop in one area and you get an extra kind of dark so there's no kind of overlap. So we're going to go right the way forwards and backwards across this bowl and we may need to come in and just get into some of this detail if we want the whole thing scorched. So here we go. So that's that, we've blackened the bowl, we haven't really kind of um, gone too far with the burning. You can see a few little splits opening up here as it um, contracts and changes shape. Um, but that's all cool, we're going for quite a rustic look with this one. And of course we've still got all these kind of machined areas. But I would leave that a few minutes, don't be tempted to touch it just yet. Um, allow that to cool and then we can um, work on something else. So this time we've got a flat panel, um, this is a black ebonizing lacquer, um, so a bit like a spray paint, uh, this is going to cover the surface and then when we carve through the surface um, we're going to have that nice contrast between the black and the, um, the kind of creaminess of this lime. So give the can a good shake, again we're going to work off the side of this backwards and forwards at about 30 centimetres away. That's it, we don't want to put too much on. I'll allow that to dry a moment and probably just do another quick coat and then we're there. So we've got a bit of a lighter patch here. So let's give this another coat. I'm just giving that a couple of minutes to dry. Always better to do several thin coats rather than a you know kind of really heavy coat. Um, we can take this back into the workshop now and start the carving process. So we've been outside, we've um, done our scorching. So we've scorched a bowl and a little kind of musical toad thing and um, also we've used the black ebonizing um, lacquer to spray just a flat panel. Um, these are going to be great ways just to show you what I'm kind of um, what I've got in mind. Um, you don't have to use a spray can, an airbrush will do the same thing. Um, 
we're not looking at stains, because the stain's going to kind of penetrate into the wood. So if you were to colour something with a stain, as you carve down through, you're not going to get the same sort of definition. So this is a surface um, kind of layer of either carbon in the, in the um, burnt one, and um, that kind of spray, the ebonising lacquer on our flat panel. Um, I'm going to invite you in to have a bit of a closer look, see what we're doing. Um, so come on over to the bench. So here's our bowl, and um, you can see how I scorched the surface here. Try to get a nice even kind of burn on it. Um, now, this can be a bit messy. If you see on this side, I've kind of given it a bit of a rub already, so I'll do it on a clean finger, um, that it's not picking up too much carbon off the surface. This side, where I haven't rubbed it back, you'll see straight away the difference. So we're just going to use a bit of, um, a bit of rag or a bit of this blue cloth and we're just going to use a bit of pressure and just give this a little rub down just to knock off that surface carbon um, just so that we can work a little bit cleaner uh, once we get going and that actually dulls down the kind of shininess of the um, of the burn as well so it brings it back to this lovely kind of matte um, kind of a dark brown really rather than a black but let's give that a good rub. And then we've got this lovely kind of matte look to the bowl. Um, you know, that looks nice just by itself. Um, but we're going to carve just beneath the surface of these burns. Um, we're going to do a bit of freehand carving to get going. First job is to hold that bowl so that we can safely carve it. Now, I've used some bench dogs um, and the vise, just a couple of pieces of timber, and then we can hold that in the vise. Okay, we're not putting too much pressure on, just enough to hold it while we're carving. Um, but you could use something like router matting if you've got a nice flat surface to put the, um, the bowl down, like a non slip. Uh, router matting, um, but this is the way I've come up with, with holding the bowl. You don't want to be ho hand holding this and, and carving, um, and we can't carve towards ourselves either, so we're kind of coming over the top of the bowl. Okay, so um, we're going to start marking out some bits on this bowl, and I think we're going to do like a little tree scene. So we'll do some tree and some little um, grasses um, and I think we'll do this on one side, maybe turn it around and do one on the other as well. Um, so pencil, I'm just going to literally draw a line on our bowl, coming pretty straight up and then just take a little turn, come back to that straight area and then we're going to do like a fork. There, so really really simple. Um, using one of these little flex cut palm tools, that's got the V tool in in a minute, which we'll come back to, um, but we're going with this one. This has got quite a tight sweep on this one, because um, we're going to start off with the trunk. Okay, so that little line is representing the trunk, and you'll see straight away, if we start to come down that edge, that contrast that we get. Okay, now this is a kind of a curve on this bowl. So as I, you know, if I push this chisel straight forward, or this gouge straight forward, it's going to come straight out of the cut. So we're just lifting the handle as we go and try and keep a nice kind of constant um, cut going on. Um, so yeah, here we go. With our carving, we will always want to keep our hand behind the cutting edge. Um, if you wanted to get rid of any chips, make sure you use this and not swiping your finger across. Um, and trying to keep that constant depth will give you a nice kind of thickness to our um, trunk. As we come to the branches, you can drop the handle just a little bit, so bringing it away will give you a slightly shallower cut. So these should just sort of taper off a little bit as we come to the end of the branch. Okay, so we want a thicker line 
leading into a kind of a little taper. Good. These ones again, these are little kind of offshoots off the side of the uh, main trunk. So they're going to be a little bit thinner too. And just dropping the handle at the end of each cut just to come out and then we're cutting our way out and not lifting any grain or pulling the grain either let's just extend this one a little and I think let's make this more uh, wider so just putting a little bit more pressure on finding that groove that the carving tools already sat in and we'll just open this shape up a little bit um, at the bottom good so like I say this is going to be a really kind of simple um, carving we're going to start to add some leaves we could, if you want to extend these, um, we can change that cutter out for the V cutter. That's going to give us a much thinner little line. And we can do some kind of little twigs just running off of this main shape. We're not going to overdo it. Quite often these parts are kind of covered with the canopy of the tree. So we're just just making some little suggestions that there are some branches or twigs just leading off of that main shape. Going back to our um, little gouge and we can start to form some leaf shapes. And kind of dropping the handle as we go. These don't all have to be the same size. We want a bit of variation as we're going round the shape. So I want some leaves coming this way. I don't want to carve towards myself, but we can. So we'll just pop some little cuts here. That's still going to give us that same leaf shape. I think that's enough for that little section. And we can just start to build that up. Just moving around the bench to change the angle that we're cutting. And we're trying to kind of radiate out from each of these little branches. So I need to just change my position. This is hampering me a little bit. So let's switch the bow around a bit. Let's get that into a position where we can carve in that direction without this hampering the chisel. But as you can see, really simple little swipes and that contrast between the, the burnt um, surface and what's underneath that um, clean timber is really quite striking. So 
I'm going to keep with that kind of radiating Oops, so we've got a really big leaf there, we did a bit of a... Uh, I think actually I want to put another little branch in, just down here, a little, little teeny one, just coming off. I'm going to keep it so it's... Looks like it's coming out of the trunk. And then we can pop some little leaves here too. So let's have a closer look at what we've done. Um, we've got our little tree here, or the beginnings of a tree. Um, you could carry on with that. You know, that took, what, five, ten minutes? And, um, you know, really quite striking um, contrast between the scorched surface and what's underneath. I think we need to ground this a little bit down here. Um, so let's do a little bit more carving and get that grounded and of course you could continue this right the way round and um, create a little forest scene so we're going to take this trunk right up to the rim of the base and then we're going to carve in some um, some grasses or you know whatever you want to put down there you could carve a little woodland animal if your carving skills are, are there um, but yeah, taking that right to the base, and then I think we're just going to create a little bit of a kind of larger spikes with this same gouge, and then we can come back in. the V tool. So we're trying to ground this to the base. So getting rid of our little gouge and onto the uh, V tool. Okay, this is really good at carving really thin little lines. So we're going to put in some kind of grasses now. That was there really just to block out that bottom area. Um, so let's come, we don't want to come too far, but we can really just pick out some fine lines using this tool. It's nice to kind of cross them over here and there. Get that more of a kind of natural look to it. <laughs> Oops. So we're really just randomly cutting in these grasses, and let's do um, let's do like a long grass that's gone to seed. So we're doing a slightly longer, thin cut, and then we can just nip out some little. like a little seed head okay not entirely happy with that one let's try that again I'm going to extend this one here just so that you have a good example <laughs> Just gonna dip the V tool in, lift it out, and we should just get some little flecks. Just 
just to show you really you can get quite a lot of detail in there um, if you need to and again let's just have a little look at what we've done Okay, so really quick, easy, nice way of adding some decoration. And I really love this kind of matte brown. And we'll show you how to fix that in a bit, because this has still got loose carbon on. You can see it on my hands there. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're probably, there's, there's lots of ways that you could fix this carbon. We're going to use a, a spray lacquer, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. So that's our bowl. Like I say, you could do the four seasons on this. So we're looking at summer there. You could do one with little um, buds in the spring. You could do one with falling leaves for autumn. And then a kind of like a skeleton tree um, for the winter. That would look really cool. So just some little ideas for you. OK, so next project. We've got a little square of lime here, which we have um, covered with the ebonizing lacquer. Um, that's given us a really nice, actually, kind of a rich black color that we can cut through. Um, and it's given us a really nice even coverage on that, on that piece of timber. Remember, if you're spraying this, spray from one edge right the way across and sort of just take it past the edges of the piece of timber. Sometimes when you take it to the edge like that, um, it can pull if you switch direction. So all the way across when you're using those types of spray. And it's going to be exactly the same when we um, fix these with the, um, the acrylic satin lacquer. Now, not quite enough distance here between my dogs, so I've got a little scrap of wood that's just going to sit below the surface of this one. We can tighten that up, and then we've got a really good grip on our project. Again, really important when we're carving. I'm just going to switch that actually, uh, change the grain direction. The grain's running that way and that's the way I want to carve. So let's just get that jiggled back into spot. Good. So we're going to go geometric. We went a bit kind of arts and crafty on the last one. We're going to go nice straight lines, nice geometric pattern on this one. And this is a kind of stylized version of the, um, the, the Viking uh, Yggdrasil, the, um, the Tree of Life. And this is a really stylized version of it. So we have the roots and the kind of um, the crown or the canopy of the tree. A little bit of masking tape just to hold that down. And if you've, you've seen any of my pyrography videos, we're going to use just a little bit of this. I know it's black on black, but we're going to, um, we're still going to be able to see that. So I have put this pattern on with the carbon paper and I can see it, but we have found we couldn't really see it on camera. So we're just um, popping on some pencil lines so that you can see the, the pattern. Uh, nice little geometric pattern this, I really like it. Symmetrical as well. Um, we have the canopy, the roots. Cool. Right, pleased with that. So we're going straight in with the V tool this time. Um, we want that nice sharp line. And I think I'm going to start with all these vertical lines all in a row. Again, keeping the handle fairly high to start with hands behind, both hands behind the cutting edge, and away we go.
be careful while sweeping the shavings. I'm lifting the chisel and sweeping down here. Um, sometimes I found on camera it looks like this could still be quite low, but I'm lifting um, our, our V tool and swiping that way to get rid of any shavings. Okay, so. Just rotate the workpiece. Make sure it's firmly held, and then we can do what were the horizontal lines. But now, because we've rotated it through 90 degrees, we've got that nice, comfortable, kind of working angle. Okay, and we're going to start to do these little branches or roots, whichever they are. Again, rotate the workpiece if you feel you need to. So I'm kind of getting to all the ones that I feel comfortable working at that angle with. But I'm not coming around to these ones. I feel, because I'm sat down on my stool, I feel that that's a bit too much. So we can rotate the workpiece again and, um, and carry on. Okay. So if I go through one more 90 degrees, oh, I forgot to do my little diamond in the middle. Oh, so my bench dog's just slipped down. Let's go back a bit. We can lift that up and get that tension back on there. So hopefully you can see this is a really easy little job, but quite striking in its effect. Um, and I would stick with these kind of lighter timbers, so you want your sycamores, lime, those type of uh, timbers to give you that, that nice contrast. So I've just got my little diamond there in the middle. Really quick and simple, um, nice geometric pattern. Um, and of course, some of these patterns can repeat. You could put little diamonds either side um, and continue uh, patterns. Um, you could potentially extend one that way and make almost like a snowflake shape. Um, so all sorts of stuff you can do with these, um, these little 
geometric patterns. Okay, so we've just brought in a big piece of paper to protect the bench, newspaper, whatever you've got to kind of just stop the, um, the finish from, from getting on a bench, or you just spray it directly on the bench if you're not too fussed about it. Um, remember this one had the ebonizing lacquer on it, um, and then we carved through down into our, um, you know, into our, our timber. We're going to seal this now, and this would be a great way of sealing all your um, kind of burnt surfaces as well. This is going to um, kind of just seal it in. You could use a spray sanding sealer. I wouldn't use um, a brush on this because um, sometimes it can pick up the pigment and kind of wash it back into what you want. And you want that sharp contrast with this type of thing. So uh, acrylic satin la lacquer. You, this also comes in a gloss one if you wanted that kind of high sheen. Um, I prefer the kind of duller matte look. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. Give the can a good shake. And it says on here, always read your can. Um, 10 to 12 inches or 25 to 30 centimeters away. So, you know, the average length of a, of a 30, 30 mil, uh, sorry, 300 mil uh, rule or a 12 inch rule. Okay. So give it a shake and we're going to come back that distance and we're just going to go back and forth. Same as we did with that ebonizing lacquer. Um, there may be a little patch here, um, like which we haven't quite got to yet, but I would wait for this coat to dry and then just do the same process. Um, and you could put two or three coats on um, and build up that kind of protective um, barrier. So that's our first coat of um, the satin lacquer. There was a little bit here which I wasn't quite um, happy with. Um, it dulls back down so you can't quite see it um, now, but I know it's there where we didn't get the coverage. Um, that needs 20 minutes to dry, so let's go have a cup of tea, and then by the time we've come back, uh, that'll be nice and dry, and we can apply a second coat. Okay, so we're going to apply a second coat. Again, we want that 30 centimeters roughly away from the, the project, and That will give a nice protective surface um, and keep all of this detail clean, especially if you've done the burnt um, technique. You want to seal all that kind of carbon in and not allow any of that um, carbon into our lovely carvings. Okay, so a few little project ideas. This is our, um, I kind of call it line carving or um, just a little bit of decoration. Um, I've dropped in my frog there from uh, a couple of weeks ago where we made the croaking frog and just put a little scorch on the side there to show that you don't have to scorch the whole project. You could perhaps use a little microflame torch to just highlight areas and, and carve on top of that. So thanks again for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, this afternoon's project. Nice, quick, easy way to, to decorate any wooden project that you've got on the go. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe and share, and we'll see you again soon for more Woodworking Wisdom.